Welcome to the Path Podcast, where we will travel the lives of some bold women, from dreams to detours to destiny. She did not choose this path. This path chose her. This is the Path Podcast. Welcome back, Path listeners, to another episode of the Path Podcast with your sister, your motivator, your confidence builder, the one who believes that purpose is bigger than obstacles. Well, Path listeners, we are walking into, in a few weeks, Mother's Day weekend. As we all know, every day is Mother's Day. So there is no set time that we should ever celebrate that. But today I wanted to pop in and do a solo episode with a little twist. Of course, I'm going to honor mothers out there as well as highlight what is a mother? Who are, who are mothers? We, we have to look at this thing differently, ladies and gentlemen out there. I'm asking, I'm not asking a question, but I'm making a statement that I do believe that I read an article where someone else was asking, is motherhood the epitome of womanhood? So I'm not going to ask the question. Everybody, we all have our opinions. I know in my opinion, motherhood is not the epitome of womanhood, but we're going to get into that. We're going to take several different angles here. And first, I'm going to start out again where, yes, we're going to honor Mother's Day. So I want to say happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. I know we put a title on what a mother is, and I understand that. We know it is a huge celebration. It's a blessing. I'm a mother, and I can say for me, it has been the most rewarding Uh, position I've ever been placed in, thankfully. And also, I'm a child who's lost a mother. So I know what it is to grieve a mother. And I lost my mother, as you may know, many of you out there at 12 years old. So I'm going to touch on that as well. Today, we are going to honor that because then we need to honor also the mothers out there that have heartbreak, pain, and many questions we're going to honor the women women out there who still long to be mothers. And, and we need to honor the women out there who has made a choice not to be a mother. That makes her no different than we are. Those are some of the things I want to talk about. But as I talk first about a mother, let's talk about what, what, what we know mothers to be. Like I read something where it says mother is makes more of an impact when used as a verb. And when you think back to your mothers, you definitely know that to be true. It doesn't mean you don't know that because you can think of all the things she's done for you by running you here, running you there, the cooking, the cleaning. She's the doctor. She's the lawyer. She's your confidant. She is the one that just did it all. I can't, she's a chef. Uh, She's just everything. And definitely this is about mothers. So prayerfully fathers are in children's lives as well helping right now we're talking about mothers I read something also that said mothers remain some of our most powerful teachers in the hands-on laboratory of everyday living of all their many attributes all that comes down to this is the heart a mother's heart it has everything to do with the tenderness and toughness the compassion and conscientiousness of the heart as we all know there is nothing quite comforting as having our mother's arms wrapped around us when we are sad, lonely, or afraid. I can go on and on about a mother, but I bet if you sit right there and think about your mother and think about the joys and the love and the comfort that she offered, I I, I don't have to go through too much more. We honor you as well as we honor all the women out there who takes that role as mother. And I'm going to go through a lot of the different roles that women play as mothers. But the second point I want to go into, because I can go on and on about how we honor our mothers. But the second point I want to talk about today is how I believe that motherhood is not the epitome of womanhood. Now, that is my opinion. I'm sure you have yours and trust me, if you have yours, let's have a dialogue about it. I would love to hear from you. Send me an email, respond to me on Instagram and let's have a discussion. I would love to invite you in. But the reason I 
am so firm on that statement that motherhood is not the epitome of being a woman is because for all the complex reasons that make up a woman, we have many things that make us who we are. And because I was able to conceive, give birth to my daughter, now I'm the epitome of womanhood. No, I just don't believe that. I was a woman before I conceive, and I would be a woman even if I did not conceive in my eyes. There is more to my identity than my status of being a mother. I read an interesting article written by Jenny Ellis. And in the article, it's coming from a perspective of now a person who's 50 years old who had their child. She went into a whole lot, but the part I wanted to pull out of it was she wrote, it never occur, even occurred to me growing up that I might not choose to have children. In fact, this was reinforced on a regular basis by the question from those adults around me. So how many children are you going to have? Two was always my answer, a boy and a girl, of course. She said, now, as a 50-something-year-old woman today with one child, now an adult myself, and on reflection, how crazy that question is asked of a young girl. Well, before she has any sense of who she is, what she might like to do in life, what her situation might end up being or who she might partner with, if at all, and how they together might feel about having children. So many variables, and yet the assumption remains that girls, when they grow up, will have children as, matter, as a matter of course, and not what's more, that they would naturally want to have children. I am sure this is in many cases true. However, in, men, in my experience, it is part of the setup that sees us arrive at motherhood and think we should feel completed by the experience. On the flip side, of course, to hold motherhood as a point of completion and for the woman to find herself unable to bear, ch bear children through circumstances or, or health means, she can never feel complete. Everyone, we have to be careful what we plant in our, especially our little girls. We, do, we don't do that to our boys. And no, boys can't get pregnant. But the point I'm making is stop asking our little girls that even the young ladies that are now, even if they've just gotten married, let everybody be because that woman should first be able to make the choice what it is she want to do. It is between that young lady and her husband. Even if moms, we have to be mindful of that as much as we would want one day to have grandkids we have to still be respectful of the young lady because you know what we first women have to do? Identify who we are first and not thinking that we have to fill some obligation that now that I'm married, that it's time to have a child. No, sometimes our completeness comes from being just who we want to be. And if we choose then to be mothers, then we choose to be mothers because everyone, we can live or a woman you know out there today who does not have children, even if she's made that choice for herself or not, that she still can live a fulfilling life as a woman. Nothing changes about who she is, the woman she is, the powerful woman she still can be in her life. Imagine the immense pressure we will take off of young ladies, especially if we allow them to to make that decision themselves and not force the motherhood on them because maybe even though she can be the best young lady in the world, she may not be ready to be a mother. That time will come when it's the right time for her. So moms get off your daughter's case. Mothers, if you don't even have children, learn this today. Do not pressure and, and tell young ladies that is the epitome of being a woman to be a mother. Let her make that decision for herself. And again, saying that motherhood is the epitome of being a woman is unfair to those who cannot have children and those who do not want to have them or who do not have the means to do so. And if I can reiterate this again, one can be a complete woman and have a full life of female experiences without ever being a mother. As we go through this Mother's Day weekend 
And and moving forward, I wanted us all to be careful how we approach this this topic with a lot of people now, only because I understand it better to understand when they used to say stand up in church uh, for Mother's Day. I never thought about it until I looked at a lot of this as I was preparing for this episode. I've found some interesting things that they said that to be careful of, especially in church, because, you know, they will say, because I've been there, well, where they will say, everyone stand up who are mothers. And and a question asked, suppose it's a mother who's pregnant. Should she stand up? I think yes. But it's suppose it's a mother who has lost her child. Should she stand up? It, it was just stating of the how uncomfortable and how to be very careful how you approach it because it can be very, very sensitive to a lot of people. And also, should someone stand up if they adopted a child or someone who is the guardian, which I do believe they are all mothers. And I still do believe there are women who has never conceived who are mothers because we are nurturers to me by nature. Again, we are nurturers by nature. Even if I didn't conceive because every woman will walk different paths through life and each path is as valid as any other. And, and it doesn't matter how it happens. So today I still want to touch on how we can acknowledge the diversity of motherhood. And in, in, in what I've pulled from different places, it, it was just beautiful how they called out so many more than out than I will talk about. But a few of them is a good way that we can approach Mother's Day. To those who gave birth, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child or experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with the little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fought with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make things harder. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. Wow, that's powerful. We need you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers, we grieve with you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you hoped it will and encourage you that you will know your worth and what you offer the world. To those who are step parents, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who made the difficult decisions for whatever reasons, we're praying with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. And again, for those who are feeling pressured to become a mother and you know it's something you may not want to do and it will hurt the mother that you love so dearly, we pray your strength to help her to understand and that your relationship will still be strong as ever. Well, Path listeners, I hope this episode shed some light on how we should move forward when we're responding with this amazing holiday weekend that's coming up, as well as how we can celebrate all women because all women are nurturers by nature. In respect and honor for my mother, who I lost again at 12 years old, something I normally post many times on Facebook that I want to share for those women like myself who grieve their mothers daily, but are so thankful that for the time we've had them in our lives. I've only had my mother for 12 years, but the one thing I always tell everyone 
I was blessed with so many other women in my life, in my neighborhood that was our village that stood in the gap. They, they didn't try to take the place of my mother. They stood in the gap and did some of the things that my mother would have done. I can't thank them enough, but on this platform, I can honor them. To my aunt Gertrude Mitchell, who took a school shopping and bought a lot of my undergarments that I don't think I knew the size of until I went to college, to be honest. <laughs> and she did so much more. Oh my gosh, I thank her. And to my aunt Evelina and Evelina Warren and Aunt Lily Rose Bowman, who came and helped us spring clean our house, me and my siblings. They cooked for us as well and was just there. And to two others, it's so many more, but I want to call out two others because these were some of the people that I would jump off the school bus and go play with my favorite cousin at her grandmother's house, at Pearl Mungin Williams' house and Eloise Williams. It was that village. It was that village when we needed, I needed to be someplace and they were there for all of us. And I can thank everybody in my neighborhood. So I want to thank you. And to end the show, I want to read something I normally post on Mother's Day in honor of my mother, or me and my siblings' mother, Art Lee Bowden. It reads, if roses grow in heaven, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell her they're from me. Tell her I love and miss her. And when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. Because remembering her is easy. I do it every day. But there's an ache within my heart that will never go away. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. And to all the beautiful women out there, we honor you here on the PATH Podcast. Until next time, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for hanging with us. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. So you can stay up on our bi-weekly, real, real conversations with these bold women. You can follow The Path Podcast on Facebook at The Path Podcast and on Instagram and Twitter at The Path underscore podcast. And if you would like to be a guest on the show or have questions for a future show, you can email us at the path, the number four, W-A-R-D at gmail.com. That's the path forward at gmail.com. And if you're looking for a speaker or you're in need of a life coach, please reach out to me again at the path forward at gmail.com or at a c. K-O-R-L-E-H at gmail.com. Thank you. Until next time.